What is your most disturbing, scary, or creepy real story? Serious Part 6. For more such content, please like and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. I lived in a bizarre little house as a child. It was incredibly tall and thin, like an attached house except free, standing with three floors, a basement, and an attic. It was full of quirks, such as two fully functional fireplaces, a shower stall in the center of the basement, a backyard so small that you could not take five paces without hitting the fence, and an old-time rope. Pull dumbwaiter that led from the kitchen to my bedroom. I loved that weird little place. But unfortunately, it was incredibly old and half of its charm was the fact that it seemed to have been designed by an inarticulate conclave of lunatics, and eventually the repair costs exceeded what my parents were willing to sink into it, and we had to move. Preparing for the move was a chore. I packed most of my stuff myself, and I had taken to throwing stuff down the dumbwaiter and shoving all my clothes so thickly in my closet that they became a single solid brick of fabric. While clearing that closet out, in fact, I came across a feature I hadn't noticed before, an attic entrance in the roof. Being an adventurous kid, I opened her up, stood on the clothes, brick, and began my first and last exploration into the topmost part of our weird little house. The first thing I noticed was that it wasn't as dark as it should have been. The place was strung with old red Christmas lights, which still burned with leftover incandescence, and a dozen little cracks and holes peeped down into all the bedrooms below. The second thing I noticed was that the place was set up for habitation. The insulation was plasticked away. There was an old gurney piled with sleeping bags and sheets, and a rusted mint. Green refrigerator which still worked when I tested it. The third thing was the bones. There were a lot of bones. I was a kid at the time, with a limited understanding of anatomy, but there were bones of all types heaped into a series of piles around the center of the attic. Small and large, clean and white from every and any imaginable sort of creature, haphazardly stacked in a half dozen osseous clumps. Two of them were blackened, as if someone had tried to burn them, and the walls nearest those blackened piles were scrawled in dark bone char messages. Mostly, they were just smears, but the word, sorry, appeared more than once. That room had been sitting over my head for eight years while I slept. Account two. My grandpa made it very clear to all of us that if he wasn't going to make it to let him pass, he even said it the last time I saw him in the hospital. When the time came, my grandmother and mom and aunt and uncle weren't ready, so they allowed him to be intubated. I was so mad at them. They lied about the state of his health, claimed the doctor put off talking to them. It was all lies. I had just been through it. My daughter was born at 29 weeks and we knew something was wrong, but not what. We found out she had trisomy 18. She had been declining, and there was no way she could make it through the night. The last thing I wanted was to let her go. But I couldn't let her suffer, and I couldn't let her die alone in a incubator. I held her until she passed. It killed me to do, but I did it because I wanted to do right by her. The fact that my family was so selfish still makes me so angry. I didn't want to lose him either. But keeping him alive and extra weeks was not right. He died four months to the day of my daughter's funeral. It was a hard time. When it's someone's time to go, it's their time. Account 3. Back in late 2002, early 2003, I lived on an isolated road heading out to the middle of nowhere. A narrow road with no side streets, so houses after the first few miles and no street lights. Accidents were common since people loved to race down this road. One night I was home alone with the ex when we heard another car crashing. Only this one abounded weird like lots of cars wrecking. So we grab our shoes and run down to the road and there is literally debris everywhere. A pickup truck had taken the turn to hard and ejected all three passengers. The multiple crashes we heard was the truck crashing to the ground after each rotation. When we got to the road, the truck was all smashed up bit. Somehow its engine was revving and there was smoke everywhere as if it were on fire. All car parts and people were laying on the road. It was dark, so it was really hard to see, but I could see the outlines of a man just sitting in the middle of the road making this horrible noise. 
His friend was lying there dead, so I don't know if he was screaming in pain or shock or what, but it's a sound you never forget. By that time, cops had shown up and used their spotlights on the scene, which made it worse. My mind won't recall a single image from that moment as weird as that sounds. I can remember the guy on the road, and though I can't see his friend, I know when all the spotlights go on the road is a mess, but that's all I remember seeing. What I know happened is when the guys were ejected, their bodies were torn apart. So much so that police were walking around with body beds after the victims had long since been driven off. I know the scene was so bloody that the road and the pull-off in front of our driveway was stained with blood for days. And the neighbor told me I calmly stepped over remains I noticed next to me when the lights went on. But I don't recall any of it. The other thing I remember from that night is the life fight helicopter circling overhead and all the trees moving because it was so low. That alone is an eerie experience. Out of three men, two died on the screen. One lived and fled the country. They were migrant workers, probably my worst memory. Account 4. I was actually told by many of my older relatives that the saddest thing about suicidal deaths or whatever is that when the people die and they are discovered, they come back to haunt those who discovered them, or random people, during this process, they continuously try to convince those people to do the same and kill themselves to follow the dead, as I was told. Very freaky that this is happening to you, and you're able to think almost nothing of it. My GF, as neighborhood, had a string of suicides that were all unrelated. I actually believe what the elders told me to be somewhat true. Account 5. My uncle passed away from brain cancer, but my mom and I were kind of taking care of him through it, I was not yet a teenager, but saw the sadness in my mom when she was dealing with his dementia. He was really fucking rude to her and made me really uncomfortable. For instance, he would call her stupid for not stacking his papers right, flip out, then accuse her of stealing all his cups, so there was like 50-50 real insults and some just out of nowhere. They always had a good relationship. So it was also puzzling for me observing them together in good spirits a decade before. About a year after he died, we get home to find a few blinking messages on our tape answering machine, the mini tape ones. We play it, and it's him. My uncle, first message was one we had heard before, but we think not too much of it. The second one was one we hadn't. It was him apologizing to my mom, I recall. I shouldn't have said that earlier, so it had to have been after one of those times we left his house. Damn, it was so chilling. I tried to find some date correlation on why it would happen a year later rationally, supernaturally, but we simply don't know how. Account 6. My most disturbing, scary, creepy story. There are a lot. One comes to mind. I was a sophomore in college and some two friends, and I had heard rumors about an abandoned town in the foothills of the city I was in college at. We loved urban exploring and had already done some really neat stuff, so we figured why not. We packed our flashlights, black attire, and some water, then headed out. It was about 11.30 at night when we arrived. Obviously, you park far away from where you are exploring as to not raise suspicion. It was a bit of a walk down this dark and lonely road, but alas, we arrived at the gate. Now the entire town was fenced in, in the distance. You could just barely make out a couple buildings fading into the dark. They were small, it seemed. However, we had to find our way in. We had heard the way in was through a tiny hole cut out of a piece of the fence on the side of the hill. To find the path there, it's across from a red house. So we wandered around the area until we spotted a red house. We assumed it was the right one and started trailing ourselves up through thick brush, branches, trees. It was a lot of work to just get in. Finally, the way in. It looked as though someone had sawed through the iron fence. You're hanging onto branches or brush around you because if you let go, you'll fall all the way down the hill. We push ourselves through the hole in the fence, wipe the dirt off of our jeans and look up. An entire town, a market center, an apartment complex, houses, streets that branched off into little neighborhoods. We began to explore. We started towards the apartment complex, and what was that noise? It sounded like a beep. Did anyone else hear that? Beep? What is that noise? Beep? Well, let's keep walking. So into one of the apartment complexes we go. 
We searched around and found a mattress and some other random stuff. Okay, cool. But man, that subtle beeping keeps going off. All right, let's check out another apartment. We open the door to the next one. We open the door, and the main living room area was filled with black trench coats. Some hung up, some on the floor. We were stupidly curious, so we continued to explore that apartment. We walked upstairs, and one of the doors was completely locked. We didn't even try to force it open. We walked out a little freaked. We decided to move on and check out some other places. As we are walking outside, there are now multiple beeps coming from various locations of this part of the town. We began to realize as we walked closer to one building, a beep would grow faster and louder. We suddenly had this feeling as though we were being watched. What made us run out of that area fast was stumbling upon a decrepit old white house. In the front yard was neatly piled shattered glass formed into square shapes leading up to the front door. We knew then something here was not right. As we stared at this and thought to ourselves whether or not we should check it out, a beam of light comes blaring at us through the top floor window and the beeps grow louder and faster. We ran straight across that town as we are running bursts of light from various buildings light up and beam on us. It was like someone shining flashlights on you. You can see yours and your friend's shadows running as fast as you've ever run before in your life. My buddy falls, of course, but he is quick on his feet to recover. Together, we assume each knows the way out. Luckily, my buddy I was following had it right. I see the hole. My buddy climbs under and is out. I help my next buddy out. I didn't look back, but I could tell by the edge of the light bouncing up and down as I stood still helping my buddy slide through the hole that we were being chased. I crawl under the small hole, slide down the hill hitting some branches, and scratching myself up pretty good. We run quickly down that old road. It seems so dark with all the lights in our eyes and so quiet. We see the car in the distance, the beeps fading in the background. We get in it and drive away. Three months later, we drove by the gate. It was torn down. We walked in and everything in the town had been demolished. There were some construction crews nearby and we asked them about the place. The construction man we talked to explained that it was a hot center for gangs, drugs, murders, all of that went down inside and it wasn't uncommon. The city had finally decided to just tear it down. Although that's not very scary or creepy, I figured it was good. I have more stories if you're at all curious. Thanks for reading. First story post on Reddit, TLDR, found abandoned town and was almost killed by a gang, I think. Account 7. I was in boarding school with my upper bunk bed right next to the window, and one night, I saw this man's silhouette. The head was large, the body was a little too skinny. Woke my mate up and we watched it walk away. Funny thing was, we were on the first floor and seemed like this man was at least 8.9 feet tall. Account 8. My friend's daughter is sick, very seriously ill, she has blood cancer, she is very smart and pretty girl, and very, very young. She is 19 years old. For me, this is most scary. Account 9. My mom and I were on a walk around the neighborhood when I was in high school. It was summer, and there were a ton of frogs making noise trying to mate. However, in front of one house, hear what sound like a human screaming for help. It kept going, like a video playing the same three-second clip of a woman screaming over and over. We shrugged it off initially as he'd left the TV on but we felt really weird about it for the rest of the walk. When we came back by the house, we could still hear the noise. Some of our other neighbors had the house key to this place. The owner was old widower, and they went by from time to time to do housework stuff he had difficulty with. We went over there, told them what we heard, and that it seemed kind of weird but was nothing. They agreed to go check on him since they hadn't heard from him in a few days anyway. The poor old man died two weeks prior. The neighbor didn't hear any sounds besides the damn frogs. Still gives me the creeps to this day. Account 10. I don't know how creepy you'll find this, but I sure as hell got goosebumps like shit. I live in Norway, and it was winter at the time, so it was kinda creepily half dark. I was around 10 or 11, I think. I was walking to my friend for a visit, and to get to him, I had to pass over my schoolyard, no biggie. But as I got to the school grounds, 
I saw something that made me shit my pants. A fucking shitload of crows were plastered all over the school. Literally hundreds of them, just sitting there, no one else was around, needless to say. I walked around that time. Account 11. This is the story of O.M. In high school, I had a good friend named Steve. One day freshman year 2007-ish, he told my group of friends about an odd turn of events that happened to his brother, Tim. A couple years prior, Tim went to college somewhere in New Hampshire. One night around 2 a.m., Tim and his good friend decided they needed Dunkin' Donuts. Even though the nearest Dunkin' Donuts was across state lines, I don't know much about New Hampshire's geography, but I'm told this trek involved going through a narrow highway that takes them through some woods on the way back from Duncan. Donuts, a mysterious car pulled in front of them on the highway. It was a red compact car with the markings scratched off and its only defining feature was its license plate that had a black O and a green M, who will henceforth be known just as O.M., Around this time, Tim describes weird coincidences happening, like his phone loosing service and the jazz station playing. Smells like teen spirit, but I'll admit it, those could have just been weird coincidences. At this time, Tim and his friend were sensing some bad juju from this guy. So Tim let his foot off the gas and was happy to just let Om go off on his way. But Om wasn't done with them. As soon as Tim slowed done, Om did the same. Tim thought this was weird, but maybe if he floors it, he could get around O.M. But when Tim sped up, so did O.M. Tim and Co. were freaking out at this point and had no idea what they were dealing with, but they saw a curve in the road up ahead. They saw O.M. go around it, and they decided to just stop. Their adrenaline was pumping, and they weren't sure how long they sat there, but after what felt like 20 minutes, they worked up the courage to continue on their way. Maybe O.M. would have mercy on them. But as soon as they got around the corner, O.M. was there, the exact same distance as they last saw him. Matching their speed, O.M. clearly was without mercy. Tim and his friend were rightfully scared for their lives and relented to just going forward and hoping they could get out of this alive. Eventually, there was a fork in the highway. One led towards the college town while the other led further into the woods. Our heroes went home while Om ventured into the unknown. Tim never saw Om again. Epilogue 1. So I was told this story my freshman year and was convinced it didn't happen. And even my buddy Steve wasn't exactly sure of its veracity. But around 2008, 2009, I was listening to the local talk radio station while doing homework and heard a news bulletin. There was a murder in a neighboring county the previous night and the sole witness saw a car leaving the scene of the crime. She described it as a red compact car with a license plate that had a black O and a green M. I nearly shit myself. I'm in suburban Orange County, California. What the fuck is OM doing all the way over here? Maybe I was just hearing things. I ran into Steve the next day at school, and he heard the same report. We learned two things. One, neither of were crazy, and two, that OM was fucking real. Epilogue 2. This previous May, my friend Blake was on his way home from dropping off his girlfriend around 2 a.m. For some reason, he decided to take a highway that leads through a canyon home. While driving along, a car pulls in front of him. It's a red compact car with a license plate that has a black O and green M. Blake was familiar with the stories and became rightfully scared and fell as far behind OM as OM let him. When they reached near the end of the canyon, Om did a U-turn and went back while Blake continued home to change his pants and sleep. Epilogue 3. This is not the first time I posted this story. In a previous thread, you Ravetti posted their own Om sighting. That is all I know about Om. I'm thoroughly convinced he's a cross-country serial killer who crosses state lines to confuse the police. But I admit it's only conjecture. Account 12. I was around 13 or 14, and in my upstairs bathroom, being lazy, I decided to go in without turning the light on, since the room was dimly lit by the light in the hallway. From the bathroom, I can see the woods in the backyard, kind of like a hill that went up into a sparsely populated second development behind mine. Anyway, I'm taking my glorious piss. When suddenly out the forest, I see a light, not a direct light like somebody shining a flashlight facing away from me, like an indirect illumination. I look at it, and I'm thinking, the hell's this? 
It doesn't move. It just appears and is motionless. I kind of figure it might be a tracker light that was kicked on by movement and continue about my business. The light's still on. A good minute later and still facing away and I walk up to the window. It turns completely around, like a flashlight. It's a wide spread and slowly focuses and sharpens as it shines directly at me. And it's a good quarter mile away. It's a steady stream of light and it starts slowly moving towards the window and extremely bright. I can its reflection in the glass. But it doesn't light the room up. Just a bright light directly on me. To give you an idea, this is a third-story bathroom, with a good 40-foot drop to the ground and a hill that goes up alongside of it, a quarter mile away. And this thing came at the window like it was running on solid ground. I run to turn the lights on. The second I do, it disappears, and to this day I still don't know what exactly it was.